Hey everyone, Annette here. I told you all that I was going to can up this ham that I bought, and I'm going to do that today. So I just wanted to show you a little quick picture of before. Um, what I'm going to do now is I am going to take this ham out of the wrapper, um, dice it up into about, I'd say, one inch cubes. Um, and when I have diced it all up, I'll bring you guys back and I will show you how I fill the jars. I cold pack this ham, um, but since it is cooked, you do have to add um, a broth or a liquid to it. And I have um, some ham bouillon, and so I'll probably mix that with the juice that was inside of this package. I poured it off into a bowl. Um, and I will put that in the jars with the ham cubes. And so when I come back to um, stuff the jars, I'll show you guys what that step looks like. Okay, I hope everyone can hear me. My, sorry, my um, washing machine is running and it's kind of in a pantry inside the kitchen, so um, excuse that noise. Here is the ham I got all cut up. It's a pretty big bowl. Um, I don't know how many pints it's going to make. I have quarts of ham already, so I'm going to do this ham in pints. Um, here are my pint jars, all clean. Um, they do not need to be boiled and sterilized because we are pressure canning. So they are clean. Um, they've all gone through my dishwasher, and um, so they're ready to go. They're not hot anymore, though. They're cold because we're going to pack the ham in cold. Um, we want to go ahead and start with cold jars. I've got my funnel here, um, and here is the few pieces that I cut off. I'm going to put go ahead and put those in the fridge um, to use this week, either as like a ham steak or with breakfast. Or um, I actually was thinking about cutting um, a few of these into small cubes and showing you guys my fried rice recipe. Um, so I might do that too. I want to maybe start doing some pantry meals for you guys. Um, also showing you how to use your canned food to make meals for your family. I think that that's something that's really lacking. I mean, there's not that many um, videos on canning itself. But then also how to use your canned food to prepare meals for your family. I think that there's a real deficit in that area. And so um, I was thinking about making some of those videos and sorry about the cats in the background. They're like always begging for food. Um, also I wanted to show you guys, this will be dinner for me for tomorrow. It's actually pretty late at night. I'm a night owl, so I do things really late at night. Hopefully it's not too noisy for my neighbors. I live in a townhouse and share a wall, but, um, I try to not do things like vacuuming and stuff. Um, the bedrooms are upstairs, so hopefully it's not too noisy for them. But in here I have the ham that um, is still like, was pretty close to the bone and kind of hard to cut off. And then some little pieces that weren't too pretty are kind of down in there. Um, and I probably have about six stalks of celery, about a cup and a half of baby carrots, about a cup and a half of soup beans, like 16 bean variety or something like that. I have a couple of tablespoons of my ham base, or I guess it's more like teaspoons of my ham base. Um, and then I also have um, some, some pepper and uh, crushed red pepper, a little bit of poultry seasoning, and some garlic. Oh, and there's a um, whole medium onion in there as well. So sorry guys, I had to pause you and feed the cats or else they were not going to shut up. Um, so hopefully you heard me uh, over all of that noise. So um, I'm going to fill this up with some water, put the lid on, put it on low, and it will cook overnight. Um, then when I get up, whenever I get up tomorrow, I will kind of uh, stir through it, try and take as many bones out as I can find. Um the meat will kind of just shred itself up and I'll have a ham and bean soup to take to work with me and to eat for dinners, which will be really convenient because I work um, quite a few 12-hour shifts coming up. So that'll be good to have in the 
fridge and easy for me to heat up and just have for work. So back to the ham. I'm going to um, put this diced up ham into the jars. Um, I'm going to use, this is my ham base, I'll show it, show it to you guys. Right there. I got it at a store called, I, if you guys watched my saving money on meat video, I talked about a store called Cash and Carry. It's a restaurant supply store. That's where I got this from. It's really hard to find in grocery stores around here. I don't know if like where you guys live, if it's uh, like common to have this, but in our local grocery stores, they don't have this. Um, Costco doesn't even have this. They only have chicken and beef, um, sometimes vegetable or mushroom, but um, the ham base I've only seen at a restaurant supply store. So I went ahead and picked that up there. Um, I pretty much exclusively use it for ham and bean soup and for canning um, chunks of ham for the broth. And I kind of make it a little bit light because the ham's already salty. So I use a little bit um, less base than if you were to just use it straight for a recipe. So I'll be back. Well, actually, I'll just, uh, let's see. I'm one-handed. Let me wash my hands really good, and I'm actually going to just go ahead and use my hands to put some of the ham in the jar so you can see what that looks like. All right, now that I've washed my hands really, really well, I will show you guys. Uh, I just take some of the ham chunks, and you literally just put them in the jar. Um, you want to stuff them in pretty good. They don't have to be quite as tight as when you raw pack meat um, because this meat is cooked and so any cooked meat you have to add broth. Cooked meat does not make all of its own juice to fill the jar so I mean I still push it in pretty good because you still want quite a bit of meat in your jars but um, you just don't have to like fill up every tiny little space like you do when you raw pack um, chicken or pork or anything. So, let's see, let's take the funnel out. So it looks about good. There's about one inch head space there. And um, so I'll just go through. Uh, this is pretty small pieces of meat there. I said an inch earlier, but they're probably closer to a half inch. Um, and so I'm good with using narrow mouth jars. I just went through and took out what I have. Um, a lot of times the jars I'm using I've originally gotten at like the thrift store. So I don't just have like cases usually of new jars sitting around. Um, so I just pulled out what I had and I pulled out 10 jars and two happen to be wide mouth. The rest are all regular mouth. Um, but the ham is going to come out just uh, fine out of the regular mouth jars because it's cut up so small. So that shouldn't be a problem at all. So here's a wide mouth. I think it's just about at an inch. You can kind of push it down if you need to. Look at your headspace. Add a few pieces of meat if you need to. I'm going to actually go ahead and do that to this chair over here too. And sorry if my kitchen looks messy to you guys. It's, uh, I mean, it gets wiped down and cleaned up, but I. I cook a lot, and so it's constantly, you know, getting used. It's not going to look pristine, especially my stove. And my stove is old, so it's kind of stained up and worn out, but it's what I got, so I use it. So there's a regular mouth, I'll just show you, or a wide mouth, excuse me, filled up with meat. Um, and there is the regular mouth probably I might even put a few more pieces in that kind of tuck it in and when they're all full of meat and I'm going to do the broth I'll bring you guys back all right well here is our broth um, I put about maybe two tablespoons of that ham base um, some really hot water from my kettle um, because you need to dissolve that ham base and then um, any of the juices that came out of that um, vacuum sealed package of ham I drained into a bowl and then I also put in here. So that's why you might see little pieces of like floating fat and stuff. Plus this is the bowl that the 
uh, ham chunks were in why waste another you know container uh, this is my canner back here it's a presto 23 quart um, they get a little stained from use and probably like the hardness of your water and stuff our water here it doesn't seem to affect the jars very much, so I usually don't put vinegar in mine, but um, if you need to, you can put a little bit of vinegar in the water. There is a rack in the bottom. I have a total of nine jars, I believe, here, and um, two are the wide mouth, so they might not all fit um, on the bottom rack, but that's okay because I have a um, second rack here, and in the 23 quart, you can double stack pint jars. Um, not quarts, just pints. Um, I really like the Presto. I know a lot of people prefer the All-American because there's no seal. Um, I don't find the seals all that expensive, so I don't really have a problem with it. Um, but uh, some people, you know, they prefer the All-American. It was not in my price range. The All-American that's this size is about, last time I looked I think it was about $212 on Amazon and I just, I, I'm, I can't afford that. Um, when I bought this, and I think it's still about the same price, it was $70. Um, it only comes with one rack in the bottom so you do have to buy that separately. Um, I believe that was about $10, the extra rack was about $10 on Amazon. It comes with I'll show you guys here the lid. It comes with a dial um, gauge and then it comes with just the 15 pound weight. Um, I don't want to babysit this for 75 minutes. That's how long meat has to pressure can for. Sorry about that. So the um, like I was saying, the 23 quart, um, when you buy it, it only comes with a 15 pound weight, which I don't have out right now. Um, I will show you the weight I do use. I use this one. Um, I also ordered this off Amazon. It was also about 10, 10 to $12. This piece, you can see it's moving, actually comes off and on. Um, this by itself, let me take it off, is five pounds. Um, you would only ever use that, I guess, if you're cooking in it. Um, every recipe that I've ever seen for pressure canning um, always uses 10, at least 10 pounds. And then it goes up from there. Um, I'm pretty much at sea, sea level where I live, so it's always 10 pounds of pressure for me. So this extra ring here, when you add that on, makes this 10 pounds. It does come with another ring, and if you add that one, then it's 15 pounds. Um, so it equals a 15 pound weight if all the pieces are on. But um, the thing I like about it is is that I can make it a 10 pound weight. Uh, my kitchen and my living room are very close together. I can, when this comes up to pressure um, at 10 pounds, and I'll show you guys when that happens, it starts rocking and I can hear it. Let, it lets a little hiss of steam out of the vent pipe here. And um, so I can sit in my front room and read... Um, on my Kindle or read a magazine or look through a cookbook or you know work on my planner or do whatever I need to do um, I can even kind of clean up as long as it's not noisy and I can listen for this rocking away instead of watching and babysitting this gauge to make sure that it stays at 10 pounds I knew um, I kind of did my research before I bought uh, this and I knew right away that I was not gonna want to sit here and keep adjusting my temperature up and down to make sure that it uh, stayed at 10. And if for some reason it goes below 10, you have to start all over again. So I just didn't want any of that to happen. So I figured with this, uh, we were set. So usually on about almost medium heat, a little bit above medium, not quite medium high, um, this has like a gentle rock. And so uh, that's how it works on my stove. When you get your canner, you're going to have to check and see how it works for your stove. So I'm going to go ahead and ladle the broth into the jars. And you do to a one inch headspace. Pretty much everything with pressure canning is a one inch headspace. And I think that's because it gets so hot that um, it needs the room to expand and then contract again. So I'll go through 
and fill all of these up. That one looks a little bit high, but when I stir it down, I usually use a chopstick, and I'll show you guys that um, when I get there. I usually use a chopstick and uh, to get the air bubbles out. You have to get the air bubbles out and make sure there's no trapped air in there um, because that could uh, cause your food to spoil, and you don't want that to happen. So first I'll go through, fill all of these up to about an inch, probably just a tad over. I'll go ahead and debubble them all. Then I'll wipe the rims um, and I will put the lids on, put the rings on, and load them into the canner. Um, when I get ready to debubble, I'll bring you guys back and show you what that looks like. All right, guys, here are our jars all filled up uh, to one inch head space with that broth. Um, this is what I like to use to debubble. Um, Ball makes a actual tool tool for debubbling that also um, measures the head space. I think it's kind of big actually. Um, I like my jars pretty full, pretty packed tightly um, because I kind of want as much food in each jar as possible. Um, so it's kind of silly to me to use this big tool that just kind of pushes the food out of the jar. Um, so what you would do, and it's easier to do this with two hands because you have to kind of hold on to the jar, but I just kind of work my way around the edge like this and I make sure that no air bubbles are trapped in there under any pieces of meat. And then I try and usually kind of wiggle it down the center and just keep wiggling until I know that for sure all of the broth has gotten in there under all of the pieces of meat and there's not any air pockets left. And so I went ahead and I've done that already to all of these jars. They've all been debubbled. Uh, the next step is to wipe the rims. I usually use a little bit of vinegar water to do that. And then put on clean um, new flats lids. Um, they don't have to be simmered or anything at all. They just need to be washed in some warm soapy water and then they can go right on. So when it's time for that, I will be right back. All right, so this napkin here has been sprayed down with a little bit of vinegar water. And you just go ahead and you wipe the rim off. You just wanna make sure that there's not um, any excess fat on there or grease um, from your meat or your broth. Uh, you wanna make sure obviously that there's no like chunks of meat or anything that can get up under the lid because that can cause your seal to fail. So after you wipe that down, you take one of your warm lids. My hands are very clean. And you just place it on top and you get a clean ring. And then you're gonna twist that down and you're just gonna put that on fingertip tight, which is a little, I like it a little bit tighter. Um, that I can do with one hand, but not wrenched on there either. Um, because when it's in the pressure canner, it needs to be able to vent out um, air. And that's how when you take it out of the canner, uh, it creates a vacuum. Hot air escapes through the vent, and then after it escapes, it pulls the seal down, um, and that's how you get that vacuum seal. So you want to be able to let uh, air escape and then also when you pressure can you usually get a little bit of siphoning. Uh, you see how full my jars are now. You see that it's all the way up to that one inch um, head space. When I take them out they will probably be a little bit um, below that but that is normal. Um, sometimes the meat's not completely all the way covered. Um, if you wanted to put a little less meat in the jar to make sure that that happens that's fine. I've never had any problems um, with a little bit of the meat being above the broth. Uh, they say that it can darken over time, but it doesn't affect uh, the safety of the product. And I've never even had it darken. And I, I have meat up in my pantry that's probably getting close to four years old. It still tastes like the day that I canned it. Uh, I know the USDA recommendation is one year. Uh, I encourage you guys to do your own research on that to see what you think. Um, I believe that they made it one year because that's all that they tested for. Uh, I also believe that if it still has a tight vacuum seal, nothing got in there, and uh, I think it's still safe to eat. I think that you do lose a little bit of uh, nutrition 
uh, nutritional value, um, maybe some vitamin content, things like that. But I feel like the loss is minimal enough that um, it's still worth keeping and eating and rotating out. Um, so there's my little spiel on that. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and wipe the rest of the rims, put the rest of the lids on, uh, get all the rings on. And then I will show uh, the jars going into the canner. So we'll be right back with that. All right, so there's the last jar going right into the canner. There's a little bit of, I think I'd say it's kind of lukewarm water in the bottom. I haven't turned anything on yet. I'm going to bring this up to temperature pretty slow. We don't want any of our jars to crack. And uh, the broth was a little, pretty warm when I put it in, but the ham was cold. So the jars are barely lukewarm. They're definitely more on the cold side than the hot side. Um, so we don't want uh, to bring this up too fast because we don't want those jars to break. They all did fit in one layer. Um, I think because I had mostly narrow mouth jars. I'm pretty sure that this canner fits, I want to say 11 regular mouth jars in one layer and eight wide mouth jars in one layer. Um, but if I had had more jars to put in, I was doing more ham than what I'm doing today, I would go ahead and set this rack in there just like that and then layer a whole nother layer um, of jars on top of that. Uh, pints, pints would fit. Um, you can also double, maybe even triple stack uh, half pints. I've never tried it. The only meat I usually, uh, that I've done, I've done some chicken in half pints. Um, just as like single servings and I also did some salmon in half pints but never so many that I needed to put three layers in the canner but I've never uh, checked to see if they fit or not so there's uh, that in the canner and then the lid is coming let's see where the little arrow is if I can find it, if I can, I don't know if you guys can see that or not. There's a little arrow right there. Um, and it just shows you where to put it. You match it with that arrow right there. So, to line these up. It's very hard to do this with one hand, by the way. Ah, there we go. And so that's lined up. You can see I can quite a lot. It's just kind of stained. Um, you need to make sure that you can see through this before you put the lid on and I already checked that it's clear. Um, and then it just slides right into place. Uh, this is the safety valve here. When we start getting uh, pressurized this will go ahead and pop up. Um, and then there's the gauge right there. And then um, it's pretty tall and my kitchen's pretty small so I'm going to go ahead and let you guys go but I'm going to go ahead and turn this on uh, about medium high heat and uh, when it starts, when you start seeing steam come out of here, you have to let it vent for 10 minutes. So you have to uh, let the steam come out for 10 minutes. And then when that 10 minutes is up, you put your weight on. Um, and then you wait for it to come up to 10 pounds on here. And once it's 10 pounds on here, the weight that I have will start rocking on here. And then once that starts rocking, that's when you time your 75 minutes uh, for meat in pints. If you're doing quarts of meat, you'd need 90 minutes. But since we're doing pints, we're doing 75. So um, when this comes up, or when it um, starts getting hot and uh, the steam's coming out, I will bring you guys back and we'll see if we can see that steam on my camera. All right, so here's our canner and we are starting to vent. I don't know if you guys can see that. It's kind of hard to see steam on camera. But I think it's picking up a little bit. Um, yeah, so you let that go for 10 minutes. And uh, basically it ensures that the inside of the canner is all the same temperature and that there's no um, air pockets where the steam hasn't built up. Um, so yeah, so we'll time that for 10 minutes. We'll let that go. And then usually sometime within this venting period, the little um, pressure uh, 
I don't know what you call that. It's like the safety valve. It pops up, and so it makes it so you can't twist this lid off. It will not, it locks the lid into place because there's some pressure in there. And a lot of times, even with um, it venting like that, it builds up just enough pressure to pop that little uh, safety valve up. But it won't really put uh, any register on here, maybe like one or two at the most. Um, and then after that 10 minutes, we'll put the weight on and we'll wait for that to uh, start wiggling. And when it's time to do that, I'll show you guys the next step. So you can see the steam coming out there a little bit better maybe. There it goes. So that's what you want it to look like and it's going to do that for 10 minutes. Our 10 minutes are up and you can see that that safety... Uh, gauge is now or nipple or whatever you want to call it is now popped up so you wouldn't be able to uh, twist this lid and open it at all now um, so that's one of the safety features on a newer um, pressure canner and you know even I have a 16 quart Presto that's probably from the 70s I found it at a thrift store it has the same exact feature this has been around for a long time um, this is not your great-great-grandmother's pressure canner that's like super dangerous. There's a lot of safety features. There's a overpressure plug back here. It's that little black um, rubber piece. If for some reason the pressure was building up uh, into the danger zone, that plug would pop out to release steam so that the canner is not going to explode. Um, here's our little weight. We're going to just set that right on there. Be careful you don't burn yourself on the steam. And after oh, just a few minutes, this will start to kind of gently rock like that. And a little bit of steam will uh, start to come out of there. And it will keep the pressure at 10. So that will not start rocking until this little gauge gets up to there. So uh, when it comes up to pressure and it's gently rocking, I will just show you guys what that looks like real quick. Um, and when that happens, that's also when you start your timer. So I'll start my timer for 75 minutes. And then the next thing you guys will see after that will probably be me uh, taking the jars out. I might show you guys uh, when you turn it off, you just turn it off and you leave it. Uh, you don't try and uh, release the pressure in any way. You don't take that little rocking gauge off. You just turn off the heat, walk away. Uh, this canner takes about 30 to 45 minutes to come down from pressure, just depending. Um, I think sometimes like how full it is or what the temperature is like in my kitchen, but uh, anywhere between 30 and 45 minutes it takes to come down, back down to zero on its own. Um, and when it does that, I will bring you guys back and show you, show you that part. Um, because the weight no longer rocks. When you lift it up, no steam comes out. You very gently, uh, this will be popped back down, uh, you'll very gently open the canner, twist it open, and lift uh, the lid away from you so you don't get burnt by the steam because it's still going to be super, super hot inside. I'm pretty sure that the contents will still be boiling inside the jars. So uh, when it comes time for that, I will bring you guys back and show you our next step here. Okay, as you can see, my uh, weight is rocking away there. We are at 10 pounds of pressure. And um, I might turn down the stove a little bit more. It can rock a little bit more gently than that. Um, the faster it rocks, the more steam it lets out. And you don't want your canner to run dry. So I may turn it down just a little bit more. Um, I'm going to give it about five minutes and see because I did just turn it down a little bit and it seems to be slowing down a little bit. So we'll see. Uh, it might be perfect right where it's at. So uh, when it comes time to um, take all of this out of the canner, I will show you um, how that has popped down, how that stopped wiggling, and uh, we'll take the lid off and we'll get to our canned ham that's inside. I have just taken the uh, canner off of the hot burner and set it onto a cool burner, turn the stove off. 
Um, you can tell the shaking stops pretty quickly and um, it's just slightly below 10 now so we'll wait for uh, it to come down completely from pressure for that little um, safety plug to pop down and I'll bring you guys back when we're taking the lid off and we take the jars of ham out of the canner. There's our pressure. It's dropped down to zero. So uh, we should be able to take the lid off now. The pan's still really, or the pressure canner's still really, really hot, so be very careful when you go to take the lid off. I'm gonna remove that. No steam, uh, no hissing, so we'll take that off. The little uh, safety plug is down. Let's see if I can do this one handed and twist it to unlock it. And let's see if I can. That's pretty hot, too. Um, ooh, steam. I'm going to put you guys down for a second and then I'll come back and show you what it looks like inside. Alright, there's the inside of the canner. All of those jars are sizzling away. There's still plenty of water in the bottom. Go ahead and take the first one out here. There's the ham. It's kind of floating. Eventually, after the jar cools off, it'll sink kind of down. Um, ham, ham does tend to get a little bit dark when you can it. I haven't noticed any real uh, change in the flavor. I think it still tastes pretty good. It just does get a little bit dark, and it's probably just the way it's cured and, and or smoked. Um, there's another one. See it a little bit better in the light. I like to use this ham for um, making like a hash with potatoes for breakfast, putting it in a quiche or scramble for breakfast, omelet, something like that. Um, it's great for soup or casseroles like a potato and cheese and ham casserole. Um, you could put it in potato soup, you could put it in split pea soup. It's just a convenient way to have chunks of ham on hand without taking up freezer space. So I'm going to go ahead and take the rest of these out. Once I have them all out, I'll give you guys one last uh, view. They should start popping here anytime. Sometimes uh, the pressure canned um, food does take a little bit longer for the seals to pop down because they're much hotter. Um, then the uh, water bath canner jars. The water bath is about, well, bo it's boiling, so it's about 212 degrees, a little bit hot, hotter than that <laughs> at a rapid boil. And the canner gets between, it's uh, at 10 pounds, it should be about uh, 240, 245. And that temperature is hot enough to actually kill botulism spores.